From the late 18th century to the end of Queen Victoria's reign, there was a flowering of Gothic literature in Britain. From these shores emanated a wave of horror that would eventually splash shockingly onto cinema screens. of men, but now Frankenstein's most terrifying experiment comes to life. Kiss of the Garbage Woman. It's alive! It's alive! You see, I told you recycling was the future, but why? Why? I will tell you why. To bring life after death. And also to get the laboratory an environmentally friendly Category 1 rating with the council. The bin man graces Baron von Frankenstein, who crosses swords with Satan to achieve immortality. With Susan Denberg as Amy, the deformed creature that is transformed by Frankenstein into a xenophobe beauty. But within her is a dead girl's vengeful urge to kill. Also starring the captain as the leader of the telekinetic cock in cribbage team, driven by revenge to bring down the Baron with a cribbage whirlwind from hell. This rubbish has come back from the grave, or well, someone has brought it back. I guess we'd better clean it up. This summer, Frankenstein has created a new kind of shark. Frankenstein has created the kiss of the garbage woman. A Gallatry House of Horror film production. Soundtrack available from 1982. Rated R. Abra, Abra, Kadabra. I want a reach out and I want a lay down and so then, Herbert, what you found there? It looks like a k LP. Let's have a look. You're right, Gracie. Worthless pup. It's the real perks I like. Ain't that the truth? What up we here? Another bank statement? Yes, it's my bella again for me. Check this out. This idiot has even left his pin on it. Hold it up to the light and you can see the biro marks where he wrote it down. But he even gives us a Christmas tip. None the wiser. They're all fair game, especially on the Scarecrow estate. This is modern resurrectionism and make no mistake. We bring new life to stuff that they throw out. Proper environmentalists, us. You should be careful with all them bank statements, Herbert. They'll catch up with you sooner or later. Your greed will be the death of you. Greed? And what is your bonus, crazy? At least I'm in this for the money, you hypocrite. So, what do you resurrect, huh? All them personal items from your young lady customers? You've got a cheat telling me I'm wrong, you pervert. Shut it. I've been at this game years and never been caught. That's lucky for you, then. All of them old toothbrushes, use floss, roll-on deodorants, knickers, and them discarded tampon applicator thingies. You think I would get it if I get caught? What are you doing with all that stuff, pray tell, Mr. Holier Than Thou, Grace? Well, you dirty perv. Shut it. I've got my own Marbella to dream about. Let me be. Herbert walks off to the cab, cursing his colleague in search of his cigarettes. Mr. Grace has something in his pockets that he'd stuffed there earlier without Herbert seeing. He pulls it out and looks at it furtively. His face lights up at the piece of paper in his hand. Yes, at last, a school photo of that young Nelson girl. Now this is worth something, you little blonde minx, you. I can't wait to get you home, where you belong. <laughs> Thank 
Hugh Eustace. Welcome back, dearest, dearest, lascivious, laughing listeners. You keep coming back to me as if you were trying to exterminate us radio presenters with your ears. A war of conflicting ideologies. Your oral agent orange trying to defoliate my Viet Cong jungle musings. You will never win, Yankee. The difference between a weed killer designed for lawn maintenance and Agent Orange, the difference between hair bleach and rocket fuel, is the one degree difference between walking on water and skating on thin ice. This is gallantry where ambiguity is king, and some of us are definitely skating on thin ice, with a rocket-powered bomber overhead about to defoliate them with their vainglorious self-delusions of being God. Welcome to gallantry, falafel face. Welcome to gallantry. And now, let's go over to our community feature and see what pearls of wisdom our Galatry brethren has sprinkled on the not-very-cogent opinion wall this tour of duty. It looks like everyone has gone down to the Adult Education College and been caught in the same section of the Rhine Library, as the selection of rigging elections, imminent inspections and lodging objections seem to be very popular this month, directly adjacent to the Film Direction section. Everyone wants to become a film buff around here, it seems. Schwarzenegger is back. Arnie is the HR director. But this time, it's personal. Your attendance record is unacceptable. Your contract is terminated. Hmm. This fall, the long-awaited cinema event of the decade, Citizen Kane 4, starring Oscar winner Michael Kane in the lead role, Warning. Contain spoilers. Rosebud, Rosebud, it was my beloved Sledge as a boy. Not a lot of people know that. Mm. This ball experienced the hit tense courtroom drama, The Cosby Show, The Movie. After the drugs wear off, that's when the counseling begins. Ask yourself not what you can show Cosby, but what has Cosby shown you? Hmm. Mr. Grace opens the door to his terraced house on Onslow Street, quietly. He doesn't want to disturb his aged parents. He pads upstairs as silently as possible, his heart pounding, with his dusty bin prize held closely to his chest. He opens the door to his room, locks it behind him and turns on the light. He waits, listening for any sign that he has caused any perceptible change to the everyday TV banality of life that is his parents' existence of an evening. They have given up on him a long time ago with his clandestine nature, his loner ways, his cribbage, train spotter, jogging bottoms, real ale hobbies, and his secret shrine. But his shrine was his. It always was. Kept hidden when away in the back of the cupboard, safely behind lock and key. The key that he always keeps around his neck. The key that is carefully brought out now, whilst he's sure he's alone. The cupboard is opened. The shrine gives up its bounty, its Marbella dreams to him. Well, my dear, you're finally complete. Let's put your pretty face on here, shall we? The incumbent magazine cover of a blonde woman's face is torn off, crumpled up and thrown into his garbage. Now, this is what I always dreamt you would look like, my little Amy. Let's get physical. Now kiss me. As he steps away back into the room, the shrine becomes clear to him. Just like he imagined, the top half of a mannequin with blonde tresses taken from the hairdresser's bin where young Amy goes. The discarded underarm deodorant, the blooded sticking plasters, the junior tampon applicator, where it should be. The toenail clippings all stuck on with sellotape. Now her face, in its rightful place, stares back at him under the 60 watt light of fantasy. Her Disney panties around his face where they should be. A long shadow is cast into the shrine from his furious right arm, making up for all the lost time as the Amy Nelson that he created has finally come to life. To him, anyway. Welcome to Gallatry, garbage woman. Welcome to Gallatry. Welcome back, dearest listener. What have we in the inbox of destiny today? Ah, it's another email from resident, or should I say resident film buffs, Mr. Spartacus's. 
I have recently been sent an interesting photograph of a little-known actress. Although the old magazine cover had been screwed up and thrown out, a curious film spotter, or flickhead, sent it to me for further investigation. After some research, I found out who this blonde 60s starlet was. Her name, Susan Denberg, or should I say, he came Susan Denberg. She was apparently born in Austria as Griselda Zoikberger, but she was a true beauty. She was a Playboy centerfold before being picked up by a film studio that ran a competition to give her a more glamorous, more Hollywood, more sex kitten name. They had to discount most of the entries such as Ida Slipper One or Norma Snorks and simply choose it themselves in the end. A bit like how the Blue Peter Kitten Socks got his name, i.e. a con. If you have had any correspondence from a film buff claiming to be Spartacus, he is a fraud. I'm the real Spartacus and I'm back. The return of the Mac. The real Mac. The real Big Mac. Susan Denberg is still remembered for her role in the original series of Star Trek as one of Mud's women in the 1966 episode of the same name and this launched her striking beauty into other films but it was the 1967 Hammer horror classic Frankenstein Created Woman starring Peter Cushing that she is really remembered for. She was very popular and after a string of affairs and dalliances with drugs she decided to give it all up and disappear back to Austria to lead a normal life. Like a character in the film, she was an arrogant man's tragic creation that worm turned and sought revenge from her creator. And now the weather. Thunderstorms! And that was the weather, brought to you in the style of napalm death as per my contractual agreement with the authorities. Crime news! We now go over to Chief Anderson, who is at the steps of the police hindquarters, who has news of yet another crime in our tight-knit community of mistrust that Gallatry has become after the equality re-evaluation. Mind the gap. One, two, one, two. Is this thing on? Damn! I wonder what that switch did. Right. I have another crime I need some help with. There has been a theft from the museum, and Professor Polyphemus is keen to get the item recovered for the strange things you didn't know about Gallatry exhibition that's running down at the museum at the moment. On Monday, someone stole a rare LP from a glass case at the exhibition, and I've been asked for your help to recover it. It's a KTEL album called Charts Hits 82. It has a brightly coloured cover with red and blue arrows on. What? You can't normally give those away. Why is it so important, Chief? Is it another clue for catching Jack the Ripper? I hate you lot. I have a statement from the Professor at the Museum. KTEL diversified their business in the early 80s and experimented with new technologies. They commissioned a German scientist to develop a mood enhancer added to the plastic vinyl structure of the record in itself to make the listener think the tracks were more pleasing, more exciting than they were. The process, unfortunately, was not stable and the chemical additive outgassed from the plastic structure over time and caused hallucinations, disorientation and fear in certain people. The disc that was stolen was an early creditor and the property of the influential owner of the Hotel Lazarus chain, Herr Gross Hausberg, who wants it back for sentimental reasons, but in itself, it is worthless. I can't keep my eye on everything in the museum, you know. So, being worthless, I suspect that the thief has probably already dumped it somewhere. Please keep your eyes out for hits of 82, preferably your eyes and not ears. You have been warned. I remember 1982. Wow! I'd always wondered what was down at the museum these days, after their fire, and all those rumours about Greek sailors and those stolen sheep. Dark thunderclouds fill the night sky and heavy drops of rain start to plummet down, crashing onto the parched pavements, bringing an end to the heatwave. 
The captain moves the A-board inside and kicks the broken gutter as a stream of gushing water runs across the pavement outside the Cock Inn on King Street. Right, you lot, settle down, settle down. We have some important business to discuss. Firstly, we must meet our legal requirement to perform the Free Market Equality Commission review of all our regulars. I have the voting forms here, so if you could please write your names on the top and we'll all vote for each other, of which will remain regulars at the Cock Inn. The papers are passed around and each man signs his name and then looks expectantly at the captain. Right, pass the form to the man on your left and then simply write your adjudication about the colleague's name on the top of the sheet and give it a smiley face or a black spot and sign underneath the symbol and then pass it on to the left again. Which is which? Which is but? Questions like that, Mickey, get folk kicked out of pub cribbage teams. Black spot means out, you idiot. Now listen, this is the formal voting guidance from the mayor. Members of clubs, societies, or even regulars of specific public houses will also have to reapply for these positions in order to assess their current suitability for the roles previously enjoyed. As you'll be measured, judged, and reorganised in the spirit of inclusivity, I wanted you all to adjudicate others as you've been yourself. You'll be the ref, so to speak. Now, hang on, there's some small print. Any organisation that doesn't vote at least one person out obviously thinks it's perfect. In a truly equal society, this is not possible, so they'll be subject to special investigation from the Equality Inquisition. You have been warned. All the men look around suspiciously at each other with those little blue bookie pens in their hands. You can almost hear the sweat trickling down their hairy backs into the crack of their oversized underpants. Gentlemen, I've got an idea. Give me that spare form. Right, let's put Mr. Benedict back into the mix. I will speak on his behalf before we cast our votes, as he is dead. <clears throat> Benedict was a loose tongued, cribbage leakage, turncoat, tackling traitor who selfishly let us all down by killing himself in my Ford Cortina, incidentally. Unlike all of us, he deserves to go. Let's nominate him and suggest he transfers to the old Bell cribbage team. So, as he still owes his membership fees, the dry cleaning bill for my Cortina's leatherette, and his bar tab, we can now legitimately demand those from those stuck-up fascists at the old Bell. In fact, we can demand it when we go there tomorrow night for the cribbage match. Cribbage is more than just a game. It's war with matchsticks. And our second piece of business, the game plan for that lot of the old bell, end tomorrow night. We will play our singles and doubles as planned, but have an interesting piece of information about our opponents. We need to watch out for some bin man named Grace. I've been reliably informed that he's the one we need to watch. And when I say watch, I mean number. I want to make it as intimidating as possible whenever he's playing. I want him to feel like he's being watched, haunted if you like. That should put him off his game. So now it's time to practice our telekinesis exercise again. Now, all focus on this pine glass. Being there. Mr. Grace has finished work and is preparing to meet the rest of the old Bell cribbage team for some practice before the match later on that evening. He has one last check on the shrine, checks his centrefold that he now calls Amy Nelson. She is safe in the cupboard. He locks it up and places the key around his neck. He then walks downstairs and puts on his hat and coat in the hallway. There is no one to say goodbye to as his parents have gone down to the club tonight. He leaves the hall light on and walks out into the street. He begins to walk down to the old bell on Millstone Neck Lane and begins to go through his game plan for tonight. He stands outside the pub and realises that the away team have arrived early. They're trying to put us off our game, he thinks. Right, let's psych myself up. Dun, 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 dun. I have the tiger, Mr. Grace, right? Eye of the Tiger. Well, so this is the infamous old bell then, eh, landlord? It's not up to much. What else do you have then? 
I suspect nothing as adventurous as a spicy ginger beer, I'll wager. So you must be the one that killed the cat, did you? Well, I heard you were tall, I bet him looking and witty. I guess that was your brother, the crap tin. Or is that you? You will soon find out how we cribs play, mister. You will soon get your cribbage lesson, you can be sure of that. What do they call you anyway? Old Bell End? They call me the Colonel? What, Colonel Mustard Bates in the library with his old Bell End? Sorry, Captain Cockin. Hand? Are you going to order a drink or do you only have soft ones like your cribbage team? We will settle this later during the game. So what have you got? What's this KKK ale? I heard you lot were fascists. It's karma, craft coach. Perhaps a little too sophisticated for your palate, eh? Not enough chilli peppers and ginger in it for ya. Have you got any stout? No, we don't serve it. It attracts the, um, wrong type of customer. Hmm, okay. What's this then? Colonel Forrest's finest blonde ale. What's the noose on the pump clip got to do with this, Colonel? It's an American crafting port homage to Galatrae. Very well. I will try it out then, if I must. Mr. Grace is standing on the threshold of the pub between the two cribbage teams, as different as ebony and ivory, but actually the same. Scruffy old men, just like himself. Oh, there you are, Grace. Come over here and have a drink. Don't let this lot intimidate you. They're not all that. Right, that's him, lads. Let's give him the treat. Mr. Grace takes his seat and the game begins. He's feeling decidedly woozy as the room starts to swirl around him. Newsflash! Lightning update! We have been receiving reports of lightning strikes here in Gallatry. At least two properties have been struck by lightning in the past hour. The fire service is in attendance at two different locations. A property on Onslow Road has almost been completely destroyed and another on the Scarecrow Estate is on fire. We will keep you posted as we have any further news. Be careful out there, Gallatry. End of lightning flash! A pile of burning rubble sits on Onslow Road, the remains of the small terraced house. The broken bricks seem to move on their own, unnoticed by the fire crews who are dousing down now. Blonde hairs appear sellotaped to the plastic head and a pretty photo of a young girl appears as the mannequin's dummy hauls itself from the detritus. As it is only the top half of the mannequin, it stands on its hands, looks around and then begins to move quickly along the pavement, both hands down and then swinging the body down to act as a foot. Pad clang, pad clang, pad clang, away towards town, dragging bits of sticking plaster, hair, dental floss and tampon applicators behind it towards the Old Bell public house. The Frankenstein garbage woman mannequin monster arrives at the Old Bell head and goes under the back gate. It waits its chance and slips unnoticed into the busy pub and sits and tarries in the fireplace, out of sight of most of the cribbage players, bar one, her creator. So, Mr. Grace, you reckon you can play this man's game, eh? Let's see what you've got. Stop wasting uh, uh, time and uh, uh, get on with it. Feeling a little under the weather, Mr. Grace. Sure you want to continue? You can forfeit if you like. Oh, lovey, you're right there, Grace. You look like you've seen a ghost. Hey, mate, how did you get here? How did this happen? Lightning, Father, lightning. You are the creator, you are the destroyer. You had to take life to give me life. Now I want settlement of this debt. I want reparation of your wickedness. Give me what I want, and I will go away. What do you want, Amy? I was once Griselda's oil birther. I was a model of centerfold. And then I was recycled as Susan Denver, the actress. I was then recycled as a vengeful monster by Frankenstein. Then you destroyed Susan Denver and made me Amy Nelson. How much more destruction and creation do you need, mister? The endless cycle of recycling of the garbage in the world. Death and resurrection. Why didn't you let me landfill? Remember, I have been recycled before. 
And you are no Peter Gucci. You have no class, no art, no idea what you have done. Your creation is in your likeness. Garbage stolen to match your garbage life. Your squalid desires to make up your own lack of vitality. You, Grace, are the garbage monster, not I. I want you to forfeit. Forfeit your life if you truly have one. Life? What is it? I work. I collect other people's garbage. I socialise. I go down to the old bell and talk trains and ale and socialism with my confederates. Life? What more is it? Well, the creator cannot even work out what he gives. You should be more careful of what you do. If you can't play the hand in the game of cards that you don't actually understand. Cards? Is life a game of cards, Amy? No, it's cribbage. Cribbage is my life. Then, this must you forfeit. Grace, Grace, are you okay? You've got a white as a sheet. I told you, lads, this lot were useless. Cherokers. Suddenly, Mr. Grace stands up with his arm outstretched, pointing at the fireplace, with his eyes wide open. You were lying in a dumpster outside a cocktail bar when I first met you. Don't you want me, baby? My centrefold? My Amy Nelson? Everybody turns to stare at the pile of tat in the fireplace. What are you on about, Grace? It's just a pile of rubbish. It's half a dummy. It's half a centrefold. It's a half Nelson. Two, three, four. Na 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 His blood runs cold. His memory has just been sold. His angel is a wrestling hold. His angel is a wrestling hold. Welcome back, dearest, dearest listeners. We've had an update on the earlier house lightning strikes on the Scarecrow estate. Chief Anderson has confirmed that the entire Nelson family were trapped in the property and unfortunately both Mr. and Mrs. Nelson and their 15-year-old daughter Amy were all killed. A merciful release, methinks. Have you ever been to the Scarecrow estate? In other news, we've been receiving reports of an incident at the Old Bell Public House. Police were called after a cribbage match turned ugly and one of the players has seemingly disappeared. One eyewitness stated that the unnamed man was the root cause of the disturbance when he seemed to have some kind of fit during the match and then ran off into the night screaming, leaving the rest of the teams to slug it out acrimoniously. It makes me wonder what drives a man to such madness. From personal experience, it could either be a Frankenstein guilt syndrome, a haunting by an evil progeny, a really nasty unearthed secret, an unhealthy dose of 80s American soft rock, some mood-enhancing chemicals, a crowd telekinetic attack, or simply the ignominy of being beaten by the 'er ne'er-do-wells from the cock inn at Cribbage. At life. Perhaps we will never know. I love the smell of ambiguity in the morning. That's the only thing you can count on here in Gallatry. It feels like, well, something perhaps. Maybe? In Gallatry again. Or not, possibly. Is there any popcorn left? Under the centenary bridge, the voices rise in unison, louder and louder. Why not visit the taste of the Raj after the film, which is only two minutes' walk from this very thing? In Gallatry, again and again. You have been listening to Gallatry, a community-funded local radio station. I'm Adam Aardvark. Max couldn't be around at the end of the show. He often needs to lie down in a darkened room and sort of, well, convalesce. If you enjoyed today's show and want to know more or simply express a simple and not very cogent opinion, then email us at welcometogallatry at gmail.com. You can tell us what you think, although we might already know what you think. Or failing that, if you genuinely have no idea, we can helpfully provide some new ideas that you can call your very own. 
ideas that you can share with your friends and family and become a much more interesting and likable person, if only to yourself. This has been a Gallatry Entertainment broadcast recorded in a haunted pub in Gallatry. No, honestly, voices appeared on the recordings that we later had to edit out. I think we got them all, but who's to know for sure? Anyway, Gallatry is performed by Max Black, written and recorded by Max Black and Adam Ardark, is copyright Gallatry Productions 2015. Thanks for listening. But remember, on your next journey home, Gallatry may be just around the corner. Coming to Gallatry soon, season two.